Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft. How you're going today? This morning, this afternoon, the evening, whenever you're catching this video. So this is the voice over version of the live Facebook class I did in March 2024. So you just had a quick look of some of the new products that we released. So all of these are available on our website, scrapbookingandcraft.com.au. So I'm just going through a few of the products there that I'm going to use. I grabbed one of our new face stencils, a few of our new napkins. Um, don't end up using one of the feather ones. <laughs> I use the one that I'm playing with at the moment. Um, so here I'm just sort of working out. I've got a vague idea in my mind of what I'm going to do. Um, this big napkin I don't use. I want to use that in another art journal page because it is gorgeous. So I'm just sort of positioning and having a think about where I want things on the page before I get started. So my daughter sells a huge range of paper napkins. I believe we're nearly up to about 800 varieties. Mm, they're taking over the corner of our lounge room. So when you grab a paper napkin, whether it's from us or whether it's from a shop nearby um, to yourself, they come with one printed layer and either an additional white or additional two white layers. So what we want to do is we want to just work with the top printed layer. So they simply just peel apart. Sometimes that can be a bit tricky. Um to peel apart if you want to know if there's a second layer on it just pop the napkin over a piece of like book text or something and if you can read the book text um, then it's one layer of napkins if it's a bit still cloudy still then have a go and try to get the second um, layer of white napkin off so here I'm just fussy cutting around the feathers probably fussy cutting around napkins it's better leave the white backings on but of course I didn't do this time. I was a bit, um, <laughs> bit gung-ho to get started. So you can cut around big pieces of napkin like this or you can use the water technique, which is a brush, a wet brush with water and sort of tear away at the napkin. Any place that's white on the napkin will almost fade and disappear into your page. So I didn't have to be exact with my cutting. Um, the darker images or the printed images on the napkin will remain. When you glue it down, all that whiteness will sort of disappear into your page. You'll see it a little bit, but unless you get your nose right close to the page, you're not going to notice it from a distance. So the best way to stick the paper napkins down is with um, matte medium. So matte medium is a very liquidy adhesive. You don't want to use a craft adhesive or a thick gel medium. Put a generous part on your page. So I'm working in an art journal here and I've pre-gessoed my page. So put a generous amount on the page where you want your napkin to go. Because this is a matte medium, it dries matte. So if you go outside the area of the napkin, you won't see it when it all dries. And gently place your napkin over the top and get some more matte medium onto the top of the napkin and going from the center with a brush out to the outside of the napkin gently. You don't want to go over and over the top of the napkin because the napkins get very fragile when they get wet. So this same technique can be used for paper napkins, collage paper, tissue paper, rice paper, any sort of those thin sort of semi-see-through papers that are in the scrapbooking art journaling industry. A lot of companies now make them and they call them collage paper, rice paper. Paper napkins are probably the most fragile ones you'll come across, but they're also some of the most affordable ones. So if you can master a paper napkin, you can master any of those papers. So now this is the beautiful blue bird I'm putting down the bottom of the left hand side of the page so as I said this is a live Facebook class so this is on YouTube in two formats this is the sped up version and the voiceover version and there is also the long version that you can sit and do it step by step if you want to follow the class so you have the two options of watching the videos so again just putting that napkin down now do I put napkins down first before my colour? Do I add my colour around my napkins? So napkins first or napkins after colour? Depends. I wanted these napkins to retain the brightness of the colours, so I made sure they went on a white background. Now, if I'd already put blue or green on my page first, the napkin will sort of pick up that colour. So just be a bit wary of what colours are under your napkins when you stick them on. We sell napkins in a pack of two and, for example, the bird and the feather, you actually get then eight images. So you have a few to practice with, a few to stuff up, as I say, then you have a few to do your real page. So taking this girl stencil, this is part of our new March release, and just penciling around where she is going to be stenciled later. 
the reason I'm doing it in pencil is I want to leave her white and I want to add color around where she is on the page. I could always paint white over the top later um, but I decided to do it this way. Why? Because it sounded like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so I've grabbed some Dina Wakely paints. Uh, I believe I've got sky and turquoise and just wanting to add some blue. Um, I sort of sometimes I like themes on my pages or I like my pages to have sort of a story so this girl with her lovely feathers in her hair is walking through the forest and she's met a little birdie to talk to I don't know it sounds good in my head so I didn't really know where this layout was going I knew I wanted to use the two napkins and the girl and the lady stencil a lot of times I really don't know what the end result of the picture is going to look like until I play um just because if I have a preconceived idea and it's not going that way, I get a bit frustrated. So I usually pick a few products and whatever happens, whatever happens. If I'm not happy with the page at the end, that's okay. I've played, I've had fun, I've taken time out of my day, I've sat down. I've hopefully not made a, um, <laughs> hopefully not made a fool of myself live on Facebook, but usually the Facebook ones turn out. It's that bit of pressure, isn't it? So just adding some turquoise or sky paint. I think I started with turquoise. I started doing it with my finger, but I also picked up a baby wipe and was spreading the paint with a baby wipe. I'm wanting quite a lightish layer of the paint. I don't want very thick, um, dark areas of paint at this stage. I can always add more paint as we go along and darken it up. So I wanted a bit more darker behind her and the top left-hand side. I'm envisaging leaving a bunch of whitish space in the middle almost from where her eye line and above the bird is. So adding some green, I believe this is it's one of my, I don't like green, but I tend to use it lots. This is one of my favorite greens. It's Twisted Citron by Tim Holtz um, because I ran out of my favorite green, which is Dina Wakely Lime. <laughs> They're very similar in color. The citron's a bit more yellowy and the limes, the Dina Wakely Lime's a bit more limey. Um, so again, sort of putting the darkness more around her neck and fading the color up above the bird's head. The advantage of sealing the napkins with the matte gel medium is when you bring in paints over the top, um, they will cover up any of the white pieces. And if you make an oopsie with the matte medium over the napkin, you can gently wipe it away. If I didn't put the matte medium on the napkin, the paint would soak in or ink would soak in or whatever you've put on top and you can't get it off. So I decided to grab this little diamond stencil. This is, I think, going to become one of my favourite little little pattern stencils. I do love its bigger its bigger counterpart, the diamond, um, diamond stencil I use a lot when I do zentangling. But I used the reverse technique. So what I actually did was, while the paint was semi-wet still, I placed my stencil over the paint and rubbed with a baby wipe. Did I get a perfect diamond? No. Did I get a bit of texture? Yes. And that was the sort of look I was going for. Again, I could have put white on top of the blue. Um, and I've actually, this is in an altered book. So I've actually got some of the book text showing through. If you look close enough, I'm not sure whether you'll see it in the video or at the end. So I decided it's time to stencil my girl. At the moment, I'm just masking off with some masking tape a couple of the swirls in her hair that I don't want to stencil. I usually tend to not use masking tape like this, but I wanted to remember I don't want to stencil up there. I sort of get a bit carried away and then do the whole stencil. So I didn't particularly want, there's a swirl at the top, like a bun on the top of her hair. I didn't want that to go over the top of the feathers. So just put a bit of masking tape on there to remind myself to stop. So when using paint through a stencil, I like to use makeup sponges, just the cheap ones that Kmart have or Daiso have, all the cheap shops. The ones in the triangle, the like the really squishy ones. A few in the art journal scrapbooking industry sell them as well. A few companies. So you want to dip your paint, your paint, sorry, dip your sponge into your paint, but then dab it three or four times off to the side of where your blob of paint is. I apologise, that's not on camera. 
to work the paint into your sponge. You don't want to see paint on top of your sponge because then what will happen is you've got too much paint on your sponge and it will leak under your stencil and you'll get bleeding. So these makeup sponges hold a lot of paint and you think, oh no, there's none left in my sponge. It's amazing how much you can do. So just giving my stencil a quick wipe. Ooh, wiping through the stencil on a scrap bit of paper, I get an extra image to play with at some stage. It'll go in my use it one day bin. With acrylic paint, you don't necessarily have to clean your stencils. I usually don't because I'm lazy. Um, but today I decided to for some reason. I must apologize all the way through. My big head is going to get in the way. For anyone that's new to my channel, hi. I actually have very low vision, very distance low vision. And when I'm working with details on my page... Unfortunately, my head has to be a bit closer, even with it, even with glasses. Um, so my head will pop uh, into frame. I'm, I've said this many times, I'm struggling with camera angles. I like the angle to be directly over the page, but then my head gets in the view. If I change the angle of my camera, then you get a skew of the book, or you get like you're looking over my shoulder. So the little that my head's in the view in the shot, it, um, in the whole scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just fixing up, or I'm adding a bit more blue in to where her curls are because there was a bit of a white space. So I could have stenciled the girl first and added the blue. There's really no right and wrong way to do things. I just did it this way because that's the way I did on the day. <laughs> Why I do things in my art journal, I have no idea. Sometimes it just happens that way. So now I'm thinking, what next? What do I want to do? Because I've got the darkness and I stenciled the girl in Dina Wakely Night Paint, one of my favourite deep, deep blues, almost like a black. There's no reason why you couldn't use a black. I decided that, that because that darkness was on the right-hand side, I needed to bring some of that same colour into the left-hand side. So I grabbed that same diamond stencil to have some repetition on the page and just do a little bit in the corner on the bottom right-hand side, sort of fading up to the top. Then I decided it needed some on the bottom right-hand side, because you can. So just adding little bits, not the entire stencil, just little bits here and there. These repeating stencils are great because you can keep moving them and cover a larger area. And again, I'm not looking for a complete diamond in every in every little um, stenciled piece. Sometimes it's not so perfect, but that adds to the distressy look. Then I decide to do some stamping with some little dot stamps that I have. Just need a bit more texture in the painted areas. I was looking a bit plain. And it's amazing how such little details sometimes... Then I decided I didn't want to use black. Um, I go to black later on. I think someone actually suggested orange. So I grabbed my little tray of inks and grabbed all my orangey nisses out. Orange ink colours out. So these are some archival inks. Not sure which ones I end up going with. And you couldn't see that. So that was a bit of a fail. But we do persist. Then I thought I will stencil the ink because obviously stamping it in the light colour won't work as well. So I grabbed this little stencil that I have. It's got text and little diamonds on it. What I'll do is all the products from my store, I will put their names in the description box below. Haven't had a lot, lot of luck linking things in the description box on YouTube, but if I list the names, you can just copy and paste it, take it to our website, and the product will pop up. Or if you go to our Facebook page and scroll through and find this photo, linked in the comments will be all the links of the products that I sell. So I decided to grab Ready Orange and surprise, surprise, I'm actually testing it out before I put it on my page. So not like me. What was happening this day? I don't know. So I love to do lives because sometimes people give me great comments and suggestions and they said to add a bit of orange, which there's orange sort of in the, orangey red in the feathers and there's orange in the bird with the Banksia flower. So it sort of made sense to add a bit more orange into the layout. So just adding a little bit of orange here and there. Still wanting to keep a lot of that white space, which again is very unusual for me. Sort of the middle part of that left-hand side of the page. So using stencils with blending brushes um, works really well. You can 
start off really light and then you can press and go fairly dark which is really cool and the blending brushes seem to get into all the little nooks and crannies on the stencils and give you a really good um, really good covering of ink it's a lot of umming and ahhing here it's like hmm, now what obviously explaining something with my hands but I can't remember what I was talking about I was probably chatting to people on the live. I love to chat to people on the live. So now I decide to bring this really old dotty stamp back. So I don't put my stamps on stamping blocks if I'm doing sort of background stamping. If I want it to be a focal image, I will. So this is just solid dots and sort of round... I do apologise, round ring dots on the stamp. So again, just scattering that around, um, overlapping some of the stenciling, overlapping some of the napkin. I just don't want things floating in midair. So when I'm adding all these textural elements and elements, they're sort of feeding off each other. So the bird, the stenciling is sort of overlapping the birdie napkin a bit. The stenciling of the text is doing the same thing and the dots are overlapping the stenciling. So I don't have things just floating in midair. So now I decide that the girl needs a little bit of white. So I grab a, I believe this is a Sakura Jelly Roll number eight. I believe I've got in five, eight and ten. They're from Officeworks here in Australia and they are great for giving a bit of white highlights to the girl. I found the girl was too dark, um, even though I did it in night paint. But the little lines on top of the on top of the darkness actually just knock it back a bit and just sort of push it back into the background a little bit more um and i love doing sort of the hand detailing here i'm just showing the pens because someone obviously asked what it was it's my little packet of white pens i'm hoping to put all my pens back in the same bag so they do not get lost around my desk or taken somewhere and not put back um then i just mucked up i'm playing with the eye and trying to work out how i want to highlight the eye and I did it a couple of times, didn't like it. So I managed to wipe it off while it was still wet, which was handy. Then I decided that the darkness of the little diamonds in the same night paint as the girl were a bit dark as well. So again, not looking for per per perfection, not looking to do everyone, but just adding a little bit of a white squibble, squibble, scribble into some of the diamonds um, just to bring that whiteness um, into the layout. So the girl is really white. There's sort of the white, the light haze on the left hand side of the page and bringing the white into the darker areas helps tie it all together. So if you have colour in one section of your art journal page, try to bring that colour into another section up to about three sections and then it sort of ties it all together. I decided it needed a little bit of a black border. I was going to go a heavy border and then I thought, oh no, it doesn't need more heaviness. So just a dusting with my ink pad um, around the edge with a black ink pad just to add that little bit of hazing around the edge. And I think we are just about finished. So I had some suggestions on the live to add a necklace and add some earrings. I decided I would do that after the live. But the more I stare at it and I want to add a quote I was too scared to do a handwritten quote. I didn't want to stuff it up. So I think I'm going to leave the page as is. I think I've decided. Knowing when to stop is the hard bit as well. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you get some inspiration. And do share or message me with what creation you have made inspired by my page. Bye for now.